Good morning. I hope you are doing really, really well this morning. You know, there's something phenomenally incredible that happens when you start getting excited about what God is doing. When you get excited about what you are doing for God, how He's growing you, how He's, you know, coffee gets all my lacquer dir. It, you, you get excited for, oh Lord, I get to my coffee this morning. Thank you, Father, for electricity especially in the mornings, and for coffee and sugar and milk and however it is that you enjoy your coffee. Thank God for that. And, you know, the excitement just climbs. You get excited to get up in the morning, You're excited to get going. I was excited this morning. I'm like, Lord, what are you telling me this morning? What am I sharing this morning? What am I talking about this morning? And I was busy doing my thing over here, and man, it's been, I don't know, I was still trying to figure out from God what we were doing. And the next minute, I was just blown away because I ended up hitting this level of prayer that was, <laughs> it was a little bit on other levels this morning, you know. And, you know, I thought I'm waiting for God to come and do a little bit of something this morning again. And yeah, he was waiting for me, you know, and, and we tackled some stuff and we were going. It was absolutely phenomenal. And in all of that afterwards, throughout this prayer session, this prayer moment that I had, God literally popped into my mind. He's like, listen, dude, you need to remember that you are perfect in every way. You are unique, uniquely created, exactly for what I need you to be. And that led me to, to what I what I want to chat about this morning. It's because you've, you've, I'm sure you've heard somebody say, you are unique. And then, and then you heard people say, but everybody is unique. Everybody is special. And then when somebody says this, there's always somebody that tends to be in the room, it seems. That always goes, yeah, but that's just another way of saying that nobody's unique and nobody's special. You see, that's the problem. It's not. That's not a way of saying that at all. I mean, the words that are coming out of our mouths when we say, you are unique, you are not unique, or everybody is not special, or whatever. It's not even the same words, man. That word not is a very big difference in that sentence for me, I'll tell you that. Because this blew up for me about the lies. The, one of the biggest lies ever is going, yeah, everybody is special, everybody's unique. Yes, everybody is. But if you get the guy that goes, say it, says it like that in such a sarcastic fashion, then he's being... He's being on the negative side, like nobody's special, nobody's unique. And you know what? I want to tell you a few things, a couple of things this morning that, that, that wants to kind of counter that. I've, got, I've quickly got to a short little list of 10 things here, but I'm just going to pop through them quick. But they all go back to Scripture. If you want them, give me a shout. I'll give you where the Scriptures come from, but I'm sure you know them by now because I have mentioned them a lot over the last few months. And and just a quick thing, things, 10 things, you know, if, if no one was special, if you weren't special, then why would? Why would God have created you fearfully and wonderfully? Why would God have chosen to know you before he wove you together in your mother's womb? Why would he bother knowing how many hairs are on your head? You ever think of this? Why would he send his only son to come and die for you so that you may have the opportunity to live for him and inevitably when this life ends, go live eternally with him? Why would he choose to go before you? Why would he choose to prepare a table for you in the midst of your enemies? Why would he love you that much, this much? Why would he love you so much? Why would he have a calling specifically for you? And why would he have created you perfectly in his image? And then last but most certainly not least, just the end of this list. There are plenty more I could go through. Why would he bother abundantly blessing you and rewarding you, especially when you diligently pursue God? Why would God do any of these things? Why Why any of these things if you were not special, if you were not created for Him? The Bible says God made us for Him, by Him. We were made for Him, by Him. God made us for Him. So if He did that, He would most certainly not create a nothing. I'll tell you that. You know, there's one thing that happens when, when, when we get... Pep, pep talked. When we get psyched up like this guy over here trying to do this morning to tell you how perfect you are. The one thing that happened is how quickly we believe the nonsense that comes into our mind. Because that's where the enemy attacks you first. He puts the thought into your mind and we just believe it. And I'm sure just by me saying this, you already, all the, the list I probably went through, there's already thoughts that came in there. Things like, yeah, sure, whatever, John. Yeah, whatever. Come on, man. Really? Thoughts like, you're nothing. 
You're not unique. You're not special. You'll never accomplish anything. You'll never get anywhere. You'll never do anything great. They'll never miss you. They'll find another you. Ever think stupid thoughts like that? And yes, I will tell them they're stupid thoughts because they are. Because that's the nonsense that the enemy, the devil, by the way, Satan, puts into your mind to let you believe that you are worth nothing. Now, if you were really worth nothing, why would he try so hard to make you believe that you are nothing? Why? Because he knows exactly how special you are. He knows it better than most of us do. I must tell you that. That's why he works so hard to destroy you. Because if he beats you in your mind, he's going to beat you everywhere else. Because this is where the battle is won or lost right in the beginning. Because remember we've said in the past, from here, it goes down to your heart. And the word says, guard your heart because all of life flows from it. If stuff is in your heart, it comes out of your mouth. If you've got hurt, bitterness and anger in your mouth, listen to the way you speak. In your happy moments, joyful moments, when things are going great, listen to the way you speak. Because the battles change up here. This is inevitably my goal, my friends. I want you to start winning these, these battles up here if you're not there yet. You need to start believing the promises of God, the good things of God, and, and get out of it. You know, John 10.10 10 tells us exactly what the enemy comes and does here. It says, the thief comes only, come, comes only to kill, to steal, and to destroy. But God says, but I have come so that you may have life and that you may have it in abundance. In abundance! You have any idea how much that is? How big that is and how phenomenal and great that is? You know, 2 Corinthians chapter 10, Paul tells us what we can do over here. In verse 5, he says, We cast down every argument and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. We do that, number one. So the enemy coming to lie to you is against the knowledge of God. I'll tell you that. Because the Bible tells us right through the Bible how phenomenally special you are. I've got a short list of 10 things I just mentioned for you. Then it says, Bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. So you must take your thoughts captive, my friend. Somebody said something the other day on a video that I came across that I didn't really think of before. You know, when people get taken into captivity, what happens? People torture them sometimes. If it's army and military things and all these things all the while. People torture them. They question them. They interrogate them. So you take that thought captive. That negative, ugly thought that the enemy comes and puts in there. Telling you that you are nothing and you'll never amount to anything and all that nonsense. You take that thing captive in Jesus' name. And you ask it. Where are you from? Why are you here? What is your purpose? And if that purpose isn't good, then you get rid of it. You cast that thing out. You give it over to Jesus and let the Lord deal with it. Because it's his business. It's not our job to deal with all these things. Especially if we don't even know what to do with it. It's our job to keep our eyes on Jesus. To keep walking on that water. Keep our eyes on Jesus. Keep your eyes off the storm and the waves. And take the next step that God shows you to take. That's where your focus needs to be. You need to take a stand, man. Because you are special. You are unique. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. Perfectly formed in the image of God. Your ability, skills, talents, your looks, your thoughts, your feelings, all of these things and more. Everything that makes you, you, was specifically designed for the purpose that God has for your life. And yes, there are places where we are rough around the edges. There are places that need plenty of growth, plenty of shaping, plenty of building. But that is what life and walking with God is for. So we can shape, so we can build, so we can perfect this character. Because if we didn't need to do that, then we wouldn't have anything to learn. But we have to learn, to grow, to get better. But don't you ever, ever again believe that nonsense that the enemy is whispering into your ear. That nonsense that he's putting up in your mind over here. Don't ever believe that nonsense again. If that's one thing that you'll ever, that you ever just remember that this guy may have said to you, is don't ever believe the lies that that enemy puts in your mind in those thoughts. Take hold of every single thing that God tells you you are, because that is what your identity is. That's where your identity lies. That's exactly who you are, is who God tells you you are. Nobody else. Only God. Nobody can be, ever be a better you than you. You need to remember that. Only you can be the best you. We are born version one. We become version two, I feel, when we get Jesus into our lives. That's where we become version 2 because then the upgrades are going to start happening. The 2.1s and the 2.2s. But we don't do much. But the upgrades come as we learn to grow with God. 
God has created you and called you specifically for that. You are the best candidate for what you need to do.